And yet you served in the Vietnam War, is that correct? Yes, I did. Who did you serve with? Um, General Wayne Powell, Region 2. So that's Military Region 2? Yeah. Were you with the SGU? Yeah. What was your highest rank? Uh, Captain. In what parts of Laos did you serve? I believe that central uh, Laos. How were you recruited to join General Vang Pao? Okay, let me tell you the story first. First, after I, I finished my sixth grade in school, then I tried to go to seventh grade, but we don't have teachers, so I joined a Lao teacher. My first job is a Lao teacher. And then after I've been two years with the teacher, so I decided I want to join the uh, HU. The reason because they had an opening job for FAG. So I just went over there, I took a test, and then I passed the test, and then I got a training about 15 days at AG. That's only 15 days. And then go operation. How uh, old were you when you joined? What year was it? Okay, 1968. I think about 24, 25, something like that. 1968? Mm -hmm. What month? Uh, I think it's August, after school break. Now what grade have you finished? Sixth grade? Uh, yeah, sixth grade. I tried to go to seventh grade, but we, the, over there we don't have teacher, okay? You had to have money and go to the city. So we waited for a couple of months. I talked to the director of the school. He said, we, I gave you some position with teacher. to go do something. Then we had to come back, but I never go back. Okay, so at in so after sixth grade, there was no teacher for seventh grade. Mm -hmm. So in August of '68, you signed up with General Vang Pao. Right. Did he come to your home or your city or your school? How did he recruit you? Okay, we live in the same city in Longchen. You lived in Longchen. Mm -hmm. They close to my hometown. I live about seventeen or oh, ten miles east. I uh, not east, something like that from the long chain. It's very close to the one. So did General Van Pao come himself? No. Recruit, I heard that some people say they are opening, position opening for FAG. So, okay, well, I try something out. So I try go over there and talk to them myself, and then he doesn't know anything about that, but part of the war. What does FAG stand for? Okay. I believe that the FAG, the forward air guide, the F A G. I believe that forward air guard guide. Guide. Yeah, guide. What did now was the F A G part of the S G U? Yeah, because I guy was name it got to the H U, but I was paid direct from the we call you call C A A whatever it because the. They are in there, the headquarters in no chance. So I would pay direct on that. Every month I come back and go get money there. When you went to Long Chen and you applied to be in the FAG, um, they took you right away and then you stayed and got trained right there at Long Chen? Uh -huh. And the training was for 15 days, that's all? Yeah, because the training was the two, uh, what you could call a trainer, that the Thai people, not Mong Mon Lao, but Thai people come to Long Chen. And so you were trained by the Thai? Mm hmm. At the headquarters in Long Chen. So what, we went, did, what did they train you? How, what things did okay. they teach you? They teach us how to operate a radio, how to make a control air at you. Because the, my position on the ground, I contact the pilot. When they come in to try to target, I had to be report to them and talk to them. Every time they come, they call my name first because I have a radio station. My the radio they gave to me the pole go that give it to me. What was the 
was it? Pogo. 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 Spell. I'm not sure. They just say your name Pogo. That's all. Oh, oh, maybe it was Pogo. Like yeah. Pogo. Yeah, they say Pogo. So that was your call sign. Every time they call, say, this is how they call. They call they say Pogo, 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 Pogo. You hear me? They will have a good time. I hear they say yeah, Pogo. They my. And it would be an American who would contact you. Mm -hmm. So it would be an American in the air in an airplane. Mm -hmm. And he would call you by radio, and you were on the ground. Right, right. Okay, so when he would call you Pogo Pogo, mm, that means, what yeah. was your job? What would you do? Okay, the, this is what they call me if I had any um, target for the for the so strike for the get, enemy. You had yeah. a target for mm -hmm. them to bomb. Mm -hmm. So I call they call me. Yeah, I have something I get uh, coordinated for them, and then they come in first at night. They drop it. Uh, called Frere. Drop to see how to that. If I see the Frere, the right target, because then the front guy had to report to me. And then they say the right one, is it okay, the right one said, yeah. And then they put a ray marker go down there. Well, I don't see it, but he said a ray marker. And so I talked to the front guy, the soldier in the front line, they say, okay, right one. And they say, okay, the right plane, the bomber. After your 15 days of training at Long Tian, where did you go? First, my, I went to a site that is sit they call Nakan. Nankan? Mm-hmm. How do you spell? And be N-A-K-H-A-N. That the part of the, the province of Samnua. How big, did, was it a base there, or a camp, or an outpost? Yeah, they did, uh, I think the Pope, uh, because... How large was it? Like, how many people were there? Oh, well, that, I'm not sure, but they had a material in there, a company in there, because the position of there, we were the transfer, and then we transport supply to the front line, too. They could be one, too, because we had the... Uh, Caribou Sea, whatever it's more caribou or landing they want to airfield be to. So there were airplanes there mm -hmm. at that base too? Mm -hmm. Well, how many people do you think were there? Like hundreds or like All, thousands? Uh, usually I think it took me about 300 or something soldiers in there. Okay, so mm -hmm. you were one of the soldiers that knocked on. Yeah, my time in the go over there, I had to be a uh, They'll be called radio operator, I'm FAG. You were a radio operator for yeah. FAG mm -hmm. at Nakan. Yeah. Um, how would you find your target to call up to the <coughs> bombers? Okay, usually we have the soldiers around, they go front line, they platoon everywhere, wherever they find out the 12 people coming, and they just call us, they call the boss. They call, they come in and come and cut to me and say, this is this, where they are. They look at it and then I call back to the headquarters of Long Chen. Or sometimes I call direct to the, uh, I believe that we had two, I mean, they can have two airplanes. One at night, one day, they blow over there every night. The one, the day, they call uh, Cricket. Cricket? Mm-hmm. They say, you call me, you have to call cricket, cricket. They can say you. But at night, they call alley cat. But I don't know what it is. Alley cat. Yeah. So at not, in the daytime, the call sign for the American airplanes was cricket? Mm -hmm. I call that one, and they can request whatever uh, airplane I, I need. Okay, so you call them. If you say, I have a target, mm -hmm. you call cricket at day mm -hmm. or alley cat at night, and they will... They will get the airplanes that you need. Yeah. Who decides what aircraft you need? Do you decide that or is no, cricket? No, the, the, uh, the cricket decided. Sometimes they send me, uh, usually they call fly fly, I believe B-26 or something like that. Something like that. And the jet plane, they can't be bad on the time because they are, Go too fast and the radio, my radio is not very good. You don't hear the sound. But usually they quickly translate for me. Oh. 
and they transmit me, they talk to the, the, the pilot, and they trusted me, they did the right ticket, I said, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Cricket and Alley Cat. Those were the American planes. Were those the fat planes? The no, I think I think the B one because they fly when I usually about five o'clock in the evening. Yeah. Another one come in. And about six in the morning, another one come in. They were about twenty four hours or well, two hours something like that. So there was always some American plane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well. When you were in Nakan, who was your commanding officer? Well, over there, I had my commander back in Long Chen, but I mean over there, I believe. Uh, Colonel Vasengvang is the captain, they won. So they were um, Hmong or Lao? Yeah. On, over there we had Lao and Hmong. We also have uh, Colonel Pan in there. By the time he died, I was there. The, the, hmm. Did you ever see any Americans at, at Nankan? Were any Americans <laughs> actually stationed there <laughs> and lived there? Yeah. You, two guys. Two Americans <laughs> and they stayed there? They had then I don't know what, what their real name is, but the radio called uh they call one in bamboo, one in bat, I don't know what they are, because, because at night we sleep side by side. They sleep there, I see that. And two American there, and two tire really, and my the monk when it means myself. They can be bugger because they do um whatever it is. Because they use some um, like a machine and dig in the, the ground and make it the more thinner with the enemy attacking the whatever gun can go. So you know. slept like in a bunker? Mm -hmm. And you actually slept in the same bunker with the mm -hmm. Americans mm -hmm. and the Thai? Yeah. So you had Americans, Thai, Hmong, Lao, all no. at the same <coughs> the time. soldier the soldier that Lao and something like that, but people over there Two American, two Thai, and myself. Only the bunker. And we have radio over there. We call the side band. I don't know what it was. B, band, yeah, B, B one. <laughs> so, and the two Americans, you you didn't know their real names, but it no. was their call signs was Bat mm -hmm. and Bamboo. Mm -hmm. And is that what you would call them when you were yeah. talking to them? <laughs> and did they call you by your real name? <laughs> Or yeah. by your call no, sign? No, they call me by my real name. Only the uh, airplane come in, I call my radio. When we talk about it, they call my real name, Yang, Yang. But I don't know that real name of <laughs> How long did you stay at Nakan? Uh, well, the first time that, I remember there for about a week. Then that's, they sent me to site. The my side 32, Bois Blanc, I was the, over there. My first time operation on the ground and um, the air. I'm so scared. And you know. this was at Lima site 32? Mm -hmm. So that was your first time of actually mm -hmm. calling in mm -hmm. an airstrike? Right. Because I, I went there and I'm not lucky. My first time I went there, they have a two big guy called 150 mm. The same over there, and I want that position. At night, around, let's just say evening, about four or five o'clock in the evening, then they began shooting at us, and then that, that scared. So I called it, it out of care, and they said, the airplane, they've been bombed a little bit. I don't know, they just say somewhere that you, you see, his, you guys see the light come from. They say, yeah, then go ahead and do that. And just, they stop shooting at us. Yeah, then my first time so I guess shaking myself. <laughs> but, well, that was pretty scary. Yeah. Uh, so you was it the very first night you were in camp and the enemy started shooting at you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what? So you called mm -hmm. Ali Cap? Yeah, I said I had, and you I said had an attack. I bombs. I said there's an emergency. Under uh, attack, and the airplane is okay. About fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. What would they say? So, American airplanes or Lao airplanes? Came American in? airplane. American came and mm -hmm. bombed them, mm -hmm. and then they left. Yeah. Must have been a relief for you. Yeah, relief because a lot of pressure. That I think they said uh, the hundred thirty millimeter shooting over there. You don't hear the sound, but just hear boom, 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 bo
then back to Long Chen, and then go somewhere else. I, my, and I can the time it, it, they lose the position forever, I was there, and two American team there, but the two American left for Long Chen, but the two Thai guys that with me, when we lost position, I don't know where they're going, I never heard of it. I believe they probably there or I think they're dead. So at some all right, after Lima site thirty two, you went back to Long Chen. Mm -hmm. How long something. did you stay there? Uh no. Or just a little just to go my, back and get myself the myself I never stay more than ten days. Usually I come back and then my boss say, Okay, five days you go to the play. Okay, two days you go to the play, whatever goes. And would they send you to all different places? Mm -hmm. Different company, whatever. Whatever they need, one guy with that. Yeah. What? So you actually went out to a lot of different mm -hmm. places? Can you remember other names of other places you were stationed at? Okay, I was here in Kwan, but usually they had the, maybe a company, maybe a bacteria that are going to the front line and they need some guy to go over there and then you have to go. Whatever my, they call my command and they say, okay, you go there. Whatever I don't decide it, but they decided to go. Some played as stay about two months, I played in a month, and then go down the play. I usually, a guy uh, go to play more danger because uh, I'm easy to talk to, okay? <laughs> so, and the boss said, okay, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. They go. And some people, they say, no, I don't go. They say, they said, they don't go, then he said, you go, okay? That's it. You always went. Even mm -hmm. when, when other people didn't want to go, you would go? Yeah, because I, I think that in my job, because I need to help it then, so I go, had to go. That time I had, I, I had not met yet a single guy. Yeah, oh. Mm -hmm. So you st you were at... Um, All over the place. San Quan. Mm -hmm. what, where else? San Quan, Sam Nguyen. Yeah, San Quan, Sam Nguyen. I also went to... They call Hua, Hua Hin San. I'm not sure if it, how to spell it, but the part is the, close to the party over there. The time they loot the party over there. At this time, but I know the party, but area, the one in front of Now you said that you were at Nakan when you lost that position. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what happened and what happened? Describe what, what Okay. Happened? That time. What year was that? I think 69. I believe it's 69. Because after the Hmong New Year, and then they sent me over to Nakhon. My job go over there to help for the team. We had the team go out, uh, return their report back. My job over there, go over there with the American and then give them the money, whatever supply they need for the team. And that was it. I'm not lucky I'm there, but a week, something like that, then they attack, very heavy attack. I have a lot of uh, Lao commander, Colonel Pan. He dead over there because he, they shoot him and began to hit his house. He dead dead. They went there, they put him there. He died there. Colonel Wan Seng Wan, he kept them. The time he was injured. The time. But if they over there, the, there a lot of the, we call enemy coming around in the, the area. And then on the west side, they come in there. I saw them over there. They run around. I called the cricket, and then send a fly fly a bomber. Check only one guy, one airplane coming. He not lucky. I'm sorry for him. He just tried to draw the bomb. He never get out. Go straight down there. If he lost everything, I never know where he would be. He crashed. Yeah, he cried there. Well, you said he was shot down? You no. Think? He just... I think that they their plan to be a economic problem. Because he just come and drop bone and never put out. Then go straight. No gun, nothing. Not very far. Just see the deck about the tree over there. Not, not very far, but I think about maybe 500 feet, um, 500 meters or something like that from our position. We right here, he's just there. Wow. Yeah. And that was an American pilot? Mm -hmm. What kind of plane was he flying? I think it would fly, fly, I think it would be 26 or 
something in there. So they call they call fly fly. So he did. Did he even get to drop his bombs, or he just came right in to drop? Yeah, and he dropped. He dropped two bombs in there. Dropped but, two bombs. Uh, but he never get out. He, he got to go train and boom, that's it. A lot of people crying. But, uh, so I, I went there. I looked at the control because we had the, uh, we call the uh, a raven control. It's more airplane. A raven control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he flew over there. I taught him if they, uh, I didn't know how to do it. I don't know how he feeling, but I know a lot of soldiers. We need help. They to come and help, and we lost his life. There was the first time I saw the plane Did. The soldiers try to go over to the airplane and see if they could rescue yeah. the Americans. Yeah, we try over there, but they got. I think they probably killed. We had two or three soldiers been killed because we, we just stayed down outside the port and then got them in. And we, we lost, we lost their position there forever. We never went back. So, then. oh, so when you went over, so at that point, there was no more bombers. And no the more. enemy could overrun you? Yeah, at night they overcome in, they were around and then we got out. At that time, my first time in the war, I lost myself for 15 days without food at that, that time. How come you went without food? Well, when you come in, every time they had been in bush because they were well planning. <clears throat> Wherever you come, they're there. Whenever you come, they're there. I think a lot, lot of people Died that that the two Thai people come in, not people come in, a lot of them. But myself, I'm at the APG, I had to know exactly where they go when they lost position. I had to plan myself. They don't tell you that, but you know yourself. You say, if we, you know, if we lost this position, how do I get myself right? And we came in, they kill us, they kill us. But I can read the team in the fifteen guy, and one guy he got shot in the leg, but made the canal. And the enemy after us one day even every time we went in, we went out. He put a hanger in there, little boom, the the shooter gun, pop 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 after that until fire cried, they went in and they gone. Uh, that time because he came. I want to make sure I have this right. Okay. Um, when the enemy came and overran, mm -hmm. you guys all left. Right. A lot of a lot of soldiers were killed, mm -hmm. um, and you all left. You, and where did you? How did you know where to go? <coughs> when oh. you ran away, where did you go to? Okay, we go back to site uh, area. My site thirty two of Bois Blanc. That man. Uh, if we lost that kind, we had to go over there to Bois Blanc. I think about. Maybe 20, 30 so kilometers. You knew that if you lose Nakan, you have to go to Lima. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So that was the closer position. That oh. was the closest position. Mm -hmm. So the survivors <clears throat> that didn't get killed. Go over there. there. Mm -hmm. Were the Americans with you in camp when you got overrun? No, uh, yeah. We stayed over there, but they went back to Lunchen before. They, I, I believe they knew they would be attacked. And the two guys said, okay, you guys stay. <laughs> and go back to Lunchen. And then the next day they cannot come because the, the uh, caribou come and drop whatever is for the supply and then they shoot a the caribou the, everywhere. So we, at that time a lot of the environment there. The caribou were the airplanes that brought in supplies mm -hmm. and they were American airplanes. Mm -hmm. How often would they bring you supplies? I went over near it if the, because the front line they said they need imminent situation and they would call them when they come. You sure they land it, but they cannot land because they, we told them that they're there and they come and drop in there and then they shoot them and they say, oh, you got shot, you better get away. They shoot at you, at you, and then they go and they hire and drop down. So how would they, would they just drop the stuff out of the airplane then? Yeah, they drop parachute, drop or whatever, drop in there. And then you can go and get it. Some little father you can get it, you go and get it. Sure, you look it up there. All in the closer one. We locked it up there. Wow, that's pretty scary stuff. Yeah. Um, when they were shooting at you, when did you decide, I we're going to get killed, we have to leave? Well, no, at night they come, they attack you, okay? 
the heavy, yeah, heavy, heavy attack, heavy attack, and I think one of the guy come here. He probably talked to you the other day. Uh, I'm not sure his name is Chu Xiong. The other guy he talked to you the other day. That his wife is locked over there. She locked forever because he's the guy, and I believe the over there. Was the, she could, captured or killed? We don't know. We don't hear anything from him. Oh. I think he doesn't hear anything from his wife. Probably be killed. How long did it take you, those of you who survived and left Nakan, how long did it take you to get over to Lima Site 32? It you really, had to walk, right? Yeah, it, it's a safe way. I think it probably about half day, something like that. About a day, I don't know. I've never been there. But for myself, uh, 15 days, you go to the play, you have back on in bush, but you have to be carried for me every 15 troop, and myself, 17, and we come out of the very careful every way. A lot of trail came in, but did the water, and then, and, and you talk about guys can what time we lack on the four guys, one of the, the guys who did began uh, shooting the uh, record one one hundred fifty millimeter and one guy two guys the team come in and myself there be only four left because that if they come in and we had to separate ourselves. Four guy together. The last time we went over there we we're not lucky because we don't know they're there. This is the, the uh, for it, 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 not for it, which I was through there, and we went into the camp. We went in there, and I said, ah, oh, slow down there, there. It was the enemy camp mm -hmm. you went into? Mm -hmm. <coughs> there a lot of, I think about maybe a thousand people there, they got a long way there. I have it in my radio, but it won't work. We can be can through, we can go through the water, you can do everything, and it, Radio don't work. I call them, it won't work. I call them, pick me up, it won't work. I saw them one day, and that the language, I never know what it is. I heard they say, they did this, they did what they say. Coto, coto. But I believe probably for the Spanish language, I think it should be cuatro, cuatro. The, they call it cuatro, but I believe it's cuatro. Maybe they say the star, four stars, something like that, I don't know. <laughs> but I heard quattro quattro. I listened to the song. I never heard because a lot of people are there. Maybe to separate two guys run out first, and we had to take a guy shoot everything out because we we come in, you let go of that. But you go back, you don't want them to hear. You go back, you have to take your shoe and sneak back. That's kind of part of <laughs> that one. All right, wait. You lost me. Okay. Um, but you came into that. So you went into the enemy camp. They yeah. had already left. No, they didn't there. They were still there? Mm -hmm. you, but we're lucky. We don't know why. I don't know why. They don't hear that. A lot of leave, but this way you walk through like that. But when they were there, just about here to the tree like that. Oh, we see them. And then we, why we hear it? Because they just, we hear the sound called the, uh, the call on the phone. The radio. The, the call. Quattro, quattro, quattro. Look at that, 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 that. But that. who was calling Quattro Quattro, the enemy? Yeah, that enemy corner. And then we look at them over there, a lot of people over there. Oh, oh the, walk out. They take all your shoes, slow down. So you took your shoes off? No, I take your shoes off. Because to be quiet? Huh? Why did you take your shoes off? Oh, okay, you don't take it. A lot of leaves in the ground. They're probably noisy. So you have to take your shoes right, off very sneak down so you don't hear anything, okay? That one, I locked my shoe there. Everybody got locked the shoe. You take it out. My radio, I throw everything that time. Only my gun, I had to take it out. Because my radio won't okay, work. Okay, so the radio didn't work when you needed it, and you all took your shoes off to sneak up on them? And yeah. you all just had your guns? Did you fire on them? No. I Did fire they because run away? No, they ain't there. They, they don't see us. Yeah. So they never saw you? No. Yeah, the whole time? Yeah, I think they saw that they probably check it out. I believe it and get catch. You would be catch right there. So, so very lucky what one. did you do? You, if you couldn't tell <coughs> the 
Americans to bomb them. I tried to call back on one word. It, this is what I, my feeling is. If I could call them, then I see them down there and see I come to them myself. And my eyes see them and where they run to, I let the guy know that this is the guy who run around. It won't work. If it works, it'd be half the law. But I know probably a battalion, a lot of soldiers are there. But the word, I want to hear, I hear very clearly, they say, this is the hard, how I remove this. So they say, uh, this is, they say, they say, cuatro, 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 cuatro. I don't know what's there. I never heard the, 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 the Spanish language. I never heard. But I mean, I come here, I heard it say cuatro, maybe four, right? Yeah. So when I come to this country, I heard the word that said quattro. I said, don't people quattro. Then I realized probably be killed by a soldier. Then why? I think they probably be speak the language. I don't hear any, I don't be any, anything. And later, after the, the loud correction, I saw some guy over there. This is, you have to just get, get me, that kind of like a, an Africa guy, but they talk about Spanish. And they say they come from the Cuba, because I went there. They talk about that. So when I come back to, I mean, I came to this country, I heard they talk about Cuatro, Cuatro. Mm, that sound, the same sound I heard back in the world. So I think they be Cuba soldiers, they went there. Because there are B people in there. Wow. Mm. All right, so when you snuck up on him and you saw how many there were, but you couldn't tell anybody, what did you do then? Just retreat and go back? There was a name back over there and having go, try to pick up him while we tried to go, go to Boblong, and then go back, okay, fire away out, go over there. After that, we got no shoe. Oh, because you left your shoes? Yeah. Because they had no shoes? No, the shoe had to take bare food there. So yeah. you walked up where? To Longchen with Barefoot? No, we went to a Bois Blanc, Saturday too. Oh, Bois Blanc? Mm -hmm. oh. I, I take about total about 15 days. You uh, walked 15 days yeah. barefooted? Yeah, no. 15 days from Nakhan, where we lost the country. Yeah. We came in there to Bois Blanc, take me about 15 days. And oh, it took, okay, so when you lost, well, this is a different time. Mm -hmm. When you lost Nakhan, it took you 15 days to walk? Yeah, the bon blanc. How do you spell that? Bon blanc, I think it's B A B O U A long L O N G something like that. Bon well, long. Yeah. That's how you say it. Yeah, the the author called you must leave my side thirty two. Okay. Um. So the, it took 15 days to walk there. Mm -hmm. How many of you escaped that walked there? 17. The last, the last time I did two guys. One guy with me and myself. The other guy, I believe he's in Sacramento now. He's in California. I never see him out there. When I came here to the country, I asked, I asked him. They said he over Sacramento. I talked to him on the phone. I told him that the I told him that remember how we serve ourselves? He said, Yeah. That's <laughs> I said, I want to see him that he never comes to me. I don't know, the real one or not. But he the guy who the uh, dog guy who operated or shooting the gun, B we call B gun, hundred and fifty millimeter, and then when the guy put it in there. Yeah. His name we call I believe we call Yia Ta or Yi Ta. And then probably you thought Y Y E E and then Tau T H A O. Were you for the entire war? Were you always in the F A G, um, or did you have any other duties also? Okay. Um, in nineteen seventy, I believe in November something like that, I would uh, read the uh, G, G M twenty three. And we call, you call, they call PDJ, pen or jar. The PDJ. The PDJ, the plant, yeah. the plant, the plant, the plant, the plant, jar. Plant jar. <laughs> yeah. And Is that where you were located? Yeah, over there. And then we were attacking I, myself, and we were 
one day, one day, Fred go over there, and the guy, Connor and Shonlang God, just stay right here, Connor and Shonlang right here, but the God, they want to cut up, the whatever blow his head off, and when the thread go for my cell right here, and they hit bone, two bone goes to my chick face right here. When you were on the plane of jars, you got attacked? Uh-huh. And you yeah. got wounded? Mm-hmm. And then he two bone go over here. Two I cannot what? Bone. Little piece of bone. Oh, like shrapnel? No, when the bone, they got hit. And the bone. The little Mom? Bone. No, bone. They're called bone, B-O-N-E or something like that. And the piece of, uh, from the... There's a little piece of what? The bomb that exploded? No, the, 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 it's, got, it's got a guy... The, 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 when his head blowed out, okay? They can hit him and cover his face. And it's got a little bit piece, piece of his head here. Got a heat mirror right here. Oh, okay. So another guy got his head blown off? Mm-hmm. And part of his... Brain? No, it's got... His uh, skull? Uh-huh. Hit you? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh okay. I yeah, bone. bone. It too. Yeah, it too. Yeah, totally. Right here. Right here, uh, I cannot take it out. At the, when I come back to Long Chan, and went to the hospital, they take it out. They take it out here. You got hit in the face and in the shoulder? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You had to have been pretty close to the guy then. No, he got to uh, stand, stand, right stand there right here. And the con- the commander right here. Because I come to him and say, okay, we got a tent now. Because we had Spooky right there. And I called him, okay, we are taking it. Oh, I saw a guy. Okay. Then we stand up. We take a, a bomb. A, we stay over there. We, we, I believe there's a bomb over there, he there and then ground in the lower, right? So we hide in there at the corner. And what they did, what they, I believe what they got in part B, for B50 or B40, something like that. Because B right here, B3 like this, they, they, um, they shoot it through the tree, and then the other side, the shell can blow outside, and then they come hit us. They were very so close. was it? The, the the guy that was next to you that got killed, that mm-hmm. got his head blown off, was he killed by the enemy or by yeah. the American bomb? No, 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 by the enemy. Oh, so that before, before that was Spooky <laughs> there? To, was Spooky a bomber? Yeah, yeah, it's a, no, he's not a bomber. He's, uh, he's a fact. A gun, a gun uh, shooter. I think they had a gun there. They, they, they told me one minute, 150 rounds, I think that a lot of the little small gun in the airplane. Yeah. yeah. They, Shoot it out, and then I, I went there. I said, dro- that, drop the flare. I said, okay, I'm right here. I put the dark light right here, and then they saw me and then went there. But after I got injured and we went back to Long Chan, there and, was a hospital right at Long Chan. Mm-hmm. How long were you in the hospital? Uh, no, but be a time and over there, and the two of I them, mean, I believe, doctor come here and look at it, and they just put it there and cover here. They put it in the numb and then they took it out. And my cell, I don't know what they do, but they put it there and take it out. And then they, not too long, it took about an hour, two hours. Oh, so they just took care of you, treated you, and, and you were yeah. done? You didn't have to stay over? Yeah, because when I came back, I have an American guy on the operation in the field. He come in, he said, okay, you go home and go with me. So I go in and we drop in the airport. Then he drove me over there and we go over there. He said, took care of the railway. And then I went home. I went home. He bring all over my clothes. And my wife said, what is it? It's in the brain. Because you don't have time to change your clothes, right? And my wife said, that. And that time I went back to Long Chan, they did, I think about two months. And then my uh, fellow American, his name is called um, Kai. I don't know how to spell it, they're called Kai. Kai? Yeah, Kai. Kai, Kai, I think Kai, I don't know what it is. But the real name is George. His real name was George? Mm-hmm. I don't know, last name. Yeah, but he's the American guy who was killed in Israel, I believe, in 1970s, 
say something like that. He the guy who sponsored me to this country. He be my sponsor. But he went to Israel and he got killed in Israel. I believe in CIA. He, I found out his name, um, George, because when the form came in to me and said he got to sponsor you to the United States. Did you ever find out his last name? Wow, well, that time what? But many years, I don't know what they, but later they say, oh, we had to change your sponsor. They say, why? I want to tell you, he got killed in Israel. That was uh, what I heard. I don't know what they, and then they changed the, then the, um, the Lutheran, Lutheran Church sponsored me after that. He's, he will be sponsored me to come. Lieutenant to, Church? Yeah, I came to Lutheran Church sponsored me. They train, they changed the sponsor to him. But, a specific church? Yeah. A, a church or a lieutenant? No. Oh, the Lutheran yeah, Church. Luther, Luther, I got yeah, it. Lutheran Church. Oh, okay. Our uh, Christian Minnesota sponsored my family. After you were at the Plain of Jars and that attack, mm. um, did you stay there? Did the bombers come and shoot the enemy? Uh, or no, did you go back and stay at Long Chen? He ran, uh, they all ran out and we come back over around tomorrow. We're going to play there. And then we went back to Long Chen. And then Kai got me, do you want to go to school? I said, yeah. Then I went to Thailand. He studied English over there. What year did you go to Thailand? Uh, went over there in December 70, 1970. So I went over there. And then January 71, the guy, the, the American guy came in and he said, he called me my name and my uncle and he said, okay, you guy to change the job. I said, why? So I get in the plane. So when we get in the plane, we tell me, on the air, they we got paid. I got paid to, I believe, uh, 250,000 baht. I said, why? He said, oh, at least I sent you to go for UPT. I said, what do you mean? Under pilot training. That's why I went there. So mm. you were, did, did you know before you went to Thailand that they were going to train you to be a pilot? No, no. That, what they taught me is to go to the, we call it English class in Thailand in, to improve your language, okay? So you All thought right. you were just going to learn English? Uh-huh. And then, I think they probably had a plan, I don't know. Then January, they, he come in, usually money we get paid, right? They come in and say, okay, you, you, they call us, name of the, we get the C-47. He, he don't tell anything, but we on the air, he, he come in and pay everybody, say, you go to Bangkok. We went over there, and we took to the class, and maybe for six months, they call a uh, Bangkok University Aviation. And we about six months, language in there, and then we went to Huai Hin for flying. So, to learn. so you went six months to Bangkok to learn the language? Mm-hmm. Then you went to Huai Hin. Can you Hoa Hin. spell that? H-U-A H I N Thailand. Wahin. Mm-hmm. And was that in Thailand or Laos? Thailand. So you went to Wahin to learn how to fly. Mm-hmm. What aircraft did they teach you? Okay, they were called one. They called Cessna one eighty or one eighty five. One Cessna. Oh, a Cessna one eighty five. Yeah, one eighty or eighty five. Uh, and the other one. One eighty different than a Cessna one eighty five. Yeah, we got two of it. And one eighty, one eighty five meter one at two different. And then we call the call you call moot engine and believe to be M O U T H something like that. Moot engine two engine, right? The proper uh, you fly to that one too. With two engines? Yeah, two proper uh, and they're called moot engine. I'm not sure about it, but you learn to repeat that one. So it was two propeller engines mm-hmm. on it? Because you need to learn that one before you call the T twenty eight. And also the T-28? No, I, I haven't been there yet. Okay. What I did was I did solo from the Cisna and Moon Engine a little bit, and then we back to Laos and go to English class and prepare for T-28. I have the second Google 28, T-28, but we love the country. 
I never flew the T-28. You never flew the T-28? No. I, what I did, Cessna. And I went to the Army. So you, once they trained you on the Cessna, you always flew a Cessna? Hmm? Did you know anything about flying airplanes before that? No. If, if I knew anything, it would be easy for me. If I know how to drive a car, it's easy for me. I never drive. I, I did ride a motorcycle, but I never car. Right now, when I see it, oh, how, why this is fly, they, when they fly easy because they know how to control the car. I mean, it's going to yeah, same thing. Uh, the, so once they trained you in Thailand how to fly the Cessna, um, once you knew how and you became an official pilot, where did you go? Did you go back to Laos? No, I got back to Laos and then we had to learn English. Usually six months, you take a test. Yeah. And you pass the test, then you're going to the Laos, official the Laos, and then interview you every day, and then you're ready to go to T-28. We prepare everything. We we have uh, I believe eight guy pet tech. When we take you when you go to the office, they take the the test you a lot of different things. A little thing like there they say something in there. First time I don't see it, and then I almost feel myself. That okay, I see that, and then the. See how high you are to make sure everything right. They tell them thing and then they say, okay, this poor guy go first. I'm not, I'm not the one to go first. The photo of my guy go first and say, okay, this guy later, after they the great rank, you can go. And then we don't have a chain. If I had a chain to go, I don't know I'd be alive or not, but I'd be dead. Wow. What? When you learned to fly the Cessna, what role did the Cessna airplane do? What was the job of the Cessnas? They weren't bombers, they weren't fighters. Were they observation or supply or what? No, just now that they learn you how to operate the airplane, how to know so this. So it's just a training aircraft? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have to know how to fly it, and then the position go to 28. Or what is it what I heard? We will be the first group go to the T thirty eight. I believe T thirty eight. But I believe that I never see the airplane, but I think probably it's more jet. They say you gotta be go over that. Because my teacher told me he said, When you got through here, you go back, take point, you'll be T thirty eight. I don't wanna tell you, say, you see the plane uh old one tiny? I said, Yeah. No tiny in there. But when we came up there, I saw the small jet. Not very big jet, small jet there. But I don't know what it is. It says T28. Get yeah, T38. I'd probably lucky and get T38, probably flying there. When you're young, you're not to do everything, right? Like my A right now, scared. Very scared. So when you were young, you were excited to become a pilot. Um, I don't understand, though, what you're saying. Why? You were supposed to go from learning the Cessna to flying the T-28. But why did you not go to the T-28? <coughs> now when you're through, you, you solo everything, this is the Cessna. You solo? Yeah. You solo, you solo everything, you through everything, you go back, loud, and they will send you T T-28 from Laos, not from Thailand. The mic over back to Laos, you have to go through Laos, roll your air for policy. You have to go over there, training, and then you chew you too. You go to the Royal Lao Air Force? Yeah, when you go back to Lao, you have to belong to power the Lao Royal. But even you FAG, but you have to go in there. So you can fly the dead in the Lao country, right? Yeah. yeah, you have to go through the power the policy there. And myself, my title FAG, but the power the Royal Lao Royal Air Force, because you don't go in there, you, you can fly. So you didn't go through the Royal Lao Air Force? No, we, we took the test. We took the test. Yeah, we took the test. We went over there, with everything. But a guy, four had to go, go first. And I have, I have the second first one. Those four hmm? made it? So yeah, then it, they didn't need the second yeah, four? Yeah, because we have one four guy and the Lao four guy, eight people, right? Yeah. Each time the eight. But we have, they have one four. And then you had to choose the Lao four guy and the eight together one time. Yeah. 
Right. All in sometimes they should uh, eight loud and four more made twelve, whatever they should when they should. So you're eight guys. Mm -hmm. There were four of you, four Hmong and four Laos, mm -hmm. and you went and had the test? No, no. The Hmong only prepared to test eight guys. They were prepared to test eight mm -hmm. guys? Yeah, we, we prepared everything. Yeah. Test everything, interview everything, prepared. By the time to go, the two and the Hmong, eight guys and two and the four. Oh, okay. But they have other Lao people. Okay, so mm -hmm. they tested eight. You all passed, mm -hmm. but when it was time to go, they took just the first four and not mm -hmm. you. Yeah, for so, the Hmong people and they four allowed to get uh, it, and, and they you went were to not chosen. So mm -hmm. then, where did you go from there? Okay, after that, I had nothing to do. I don't learn English and threw everything, and then back to Long Chan to my position to help the uh, rebel control, but I. I went outside for them, but I never flew with them. So you went back to Long Chen and you took your position of Raven Control? Yeah, but I never flew with the guy. Usually, I have to go with them American guy. Because Raven Control, that they, they have to go with the pilot. Oh, you, so Raven Control, you actually go in the airplane with the pilot? Mm -hmm. But I, I, I never did. You never did? Maybe we went there. If the guy doesn't need anybody, so thank God we said that's okay. So, so we have living control over there. My commander said, okay, if you have to get you, right? If you have, today they, 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 they got this guy, tomorrow this guy. If you don't have me, you guys, you can free to do what you want to do. So we have to be on the office every day. If they call, it's okay to help, go. Because we had some uh, Hmong guy who usually go with the river control. But General Powell said they, he want us, the four guys, to be there with the guy. But they go there, so we might be free from them. <laughs> so did you ever fly in the airplane with the other pilot? Were you ever up in the air in the airplane? Oh, yeah. How often would you have to fly with now, the other Now, the time I did on AG. When I came back from the front line, okay, the delivery control, and my big name, they say, what part you think you see there? Okay, oh, okay. They called me, and then we went, we flew over there. I told him, he said, this is the part of the part there. And we go look, go the closer, look at everything. I said, okay, I know it. And they say, what part of the area? And we go over there, and then next time he go himself. Usually when I come back, I came to play the danger and I came back on the chain and flew with them the observation the play. I think about four, five, four or five times. When you would fly, was the pilot always American or no? Mm -hmm. Always American. Always American. Mm -hmm. Would you like the back seater? <laughs> um, so you would go with the American pilot, you would be the back seater. Would you be the one to talk to the, the guys on the ground? Uh, no, it will be good that we don't talk to them because they want me to show them what part they the enemy is, and so they know the area. So you would take the American pilot and show also them where to yeah, fly? Yeah, also show. we should to see this part, this part, because I'm on the ground. They say, okay, what part do you think they're hiding? They say, okay, according to the report, this part, this part, this part. And we go over there and point to the guy and say, get a map and say, okay, oh, this part, before we go there. Because you were familiar with the area, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they were not. Yeah. So that was out of Long Chen. So did then? Did you just stay and live at Long Chen? Okay. Yeah. My uh, at AG time, I went to Savannah Cape, the region three. How well, long were you at Savannah? Over Kent? a month, because the uh, the commander want they asked for the AG, AG because they don't have it. The commander came to Long Chen. And I went with him, and so he said, he told this, but he said, tell me. Right now, he there in Oklahoma, I believe. He named Cornet Don. He said, how come I should be angry so good? I never know what you're talking about to the plane. Because every night we went to, close to the call Mung, Mung Sui, the Masai one way, close to there. <laughs> The play way, and uh, you probably remember Lilu. Yeah. 
he died, I was there. I was there, sitting, uh, sitting there. Only, uh, I heard a lot of people talking about Lilu. They said, he died, he died. Did no. you know Lilu? Yeah. Had you met him? Uh -huh. He teached this uh, fourth grade and, and when I went to the first grade. But I never see him in person, but I know who he is. But when he, the time he, they shut down him, I was there. You I, were there when mm -hmm. Lilu got shut yeah. down? Did you see it happen? Yeah. I'm the first one to talk to Jennifer and say, that plan had been here. Because only time, that time, I believe, um, July sometime, because of hot weather. And the, the corner down, he company we call BP-101, they call paratrooper, I think. BP battery one one was there and they assigned me to them. I went over there and they they during my pen came in because I had been under attack for four or five months. I mean four or five nights. Every night they come in, every night they come in. They shoot the gun, you see like the gas, say that. They come in. Every night they uh, attack. And the daytime during my pen come in, they come there. That that day they have a heavy attack, the gun shooting, uh, I believe the American pilot, we call a fly flyer, usually B-26, can be two together, we call scary the, right? Scary the, something like that, to come in. And we attack him, they shoot him a lot, and the general park call back, I don't chance they, I want to lose, can be attack him. I believe around, Probably four or five o'clock in the pick of the sun almost dawn. And they wanna hear the little say, Dark Hall they do. Uh, the white star they call. White star they live. They say, Where are you? Pook how quiet, close to the real chair. They teach very fat. I think about three minutes of time he over here. About three or four people come here, we don't wish one. He said, cutting food, they're shooting you. Okay, I saw the gun. What you heard? He last, last word. I, heard. I saw the gun. I'm going now. Maybe we know which one. They can, they don't, they don't go down and they turn to be like a drop that they go to. And then I saw the, I didn't be in the tail. Turn like the, the magic, the light. I told the number of power because three guys. Bird, bird, right here, the American guy right here. The Palmiro and the, the, the drink at it. We look at it. I said, I told him, you know, they want, they got here. Oh, sure, yeah. He called, he called Lou, the Lou name. Nobody answered. Then the Laotian guy, Palo said, we don't know the Hmong language. And then the plane just got out, going down. Boom. So what if I figure it out? Two guys in there. Two pilots there. Low nine is the trainer in Kudon. Ready for pilot after training. They came, came back home with Lee Lu. Wait, so you think there was another pilot in uh -huh. there with Lee Lu? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who had come, okay. And was the other pilot just trained? Yeah, he did got trained in Thailand. The weekend, he back home, no chance, right? Okay. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but he probably back to Vincent and said, he'll be right there and come back after the field, whatever operation, and go back to Long Chen. And they said, okay, go with you. Because he probably the back, the rider. And what I did is what I see. The, uh, the guy probably heard the back, but he probably hear the head, because he don't say anything, don't say any word. And the plane tried to go power down and then go down at the bump right here. So a lot of people say, he go away, no, no. You can say that, no. What the, this, what I heard, they said a very bad thing about him, but not true. I was there. The morning they come in, they pick out everything about the parents, say, how do you know who is Lilu? Which one? They say, oh, the one in the front, they, he, he. The right point, because he's a pilot, right? He live in the front. They say, which one you know the name? One in the back, this one. Because the, the plane bomb went down, the bomb went there, it exploded too. And so you see a lot of black smoke all over the sky. The morning. Lilu 
though he died with that. And I talked to them. And when I graduate, then for my power come and speak for my graduation. I told him that they remember me. I'm the guy who told you that the, that plane was shot. Probably get hit. I said, okay. Because we don't see each other 30 years now. We I come to the country. I just work, go to school. I don't, I don't like politics. I got it now back in Laos. I would, I want my life to be changed something else. I don't get my politics like that. I was, when I graduated from my um, social work doctor, I write letter to him and said I want him to come and speak for me. So I said, I'd be happy. This was General Van Powell you're talking about? Mm-hmm. That's why I come and make a speech to my uh, graduation. I I try to remind him that, do you remember me? I'm the guy there at the time that he got shot. I'm the fat that told you that he, he, he said, all right. <laughs> Just it. They said that uh, when Li Lu got shot down, General Deng Pao was very devastated. Mm-hmm. General Pao and, and Burr, this is what I heard. That's a very surprise. A lot of people say, American people don't know how to cry. But when they look shot out, I see Bird crying. Oh, I said, dead liar. People have the same feeling. No, no. Because I heard a lot of people tell me that. When back in Laos, they said, the American never cried anymore than that. I saw Bird do that. I said, dead liar. People have feeling the same thing. People are scared, the same thing. They're crying, the same thing. Then, the German pound there, the little um, Bird, then they took a hit the people who got him out of sight. How far away? But I know, you know, my power is Burr. Burr? Burr, B-U-R-R. I think Burr is Smith. I think Burr probably last name. Smith probably the first name. Oh. Yeah. But he big guy in forehead. <laughs> and then crying. And so I said, people liar. They have same feeling. Hmm? So at, how long were you at Savannah Kit? Uh, for the pilot? Yeah. Well, very deep, different thing. First time we came back from Thailand, before we got to the, uh, we, they called 2400 English, let me, let me involve from the book, 24,000, 2400 English, let me. That first beginning, I believe about 500 questions, because we take about five days. Every day you go take that, every day take that in English. That's it. But after we went there for a six months, seven months, the tech came in, they, they did not be long, a couple of hours, we you throw your pet in, and then you're ready to go to take a test. Go take a test, that the people like you and me talk about. Talk about a little bit and see your height. Make sure your eye okay, your hear okay. Yeah. But when you're young, everything okay, right? You see good, you're good, yeah. you know, your body flat too. Not like this. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you go after you were at Savannah Cat? No, after that, tete tete, I don't choose to go. Then I go back to Long Chan. So you went back to Long Chan? Yeah. Now you said that you had married. When did you get married? I married my wife in 1970, I believe July 1970. Did you meet her while you were at Long Chan? Um, before that, oh, <laughs> because yeah, I visited uh, someone who know the parent, her mother and my cousin, my aunt, <laughs> and we know back before that, because they live a time about Couple hours away, to, you know each other. Once you got married, then did you take your wife everywhere you go? Not in the front line. When you would go to the front lines, where would she stay? Stay long chain at home with my brother wife, because my brother, my brother is a soldier to the army. He did the front line too, and two of them did. Where were you when the Americans left Laos? 
Well, I there be a long a long chain. You were at Long Chen. Mm -hmm. how, how, do you remember how you felt when you heard that the Americans were leaving? Because we, uh, okay, this is what I heard first the time I had uh, been trying to learn the English. Every day at noon, we come and have a lunch with General Powell. We come there. We saw General Powell and Jury. I don't know what his last name, but then Jury. They're coming from the office. Both of them play fade black. They be angry. We talk about talking something up. And Jerry same thing, Van Powell same thing. They fake it different. And then he sometimes he come here a lot temper. Eat it That's all. So I have a close friend with General Powell, he said, Well we can go to lab over Got to do this, got to do this, we got to do that. They talk about a lot of them because I, like I said, I'm not party, I'm not something like that, just go to school. I heard that. That time I don't have any American friend because, uh, Kai, George, he worked with the other people on the front line. I come back, I don't have energy anymore, I come into the pilot. Then I, I have my own, uh, commander different unit in the world. So I to do something different. I don't, I don't see anything. I don't have anyone. I know them. We hide some something, but we don't see each other. And I don't hear anything from there. But when I came to be a refugee, I walked through Laos to Thailand. I don't fly. Because at that time, that time we were, we were sick. I almost died myself. And they flew. They say, come on, go. But I can go, okay? I was sick. You were sick, so you couldn't leave Lao? Because I couldn't go and fly with them. Because they said, tell your family big day we go to Thailand. What can I do? I can't go. I, I, I can't get myself out from my bed. So. Wow. All right, well, so Jerry Dan, uh, um, it was probably Jerry Daniel. Jerry Daniel and Van Powell were angry, but you didn't know what they were angry about. Mm -hmm. Then when they left, did you, what What did they tell you when the Americans left and Van Paul left with them? What did they tell you to do? Were you going to just no, stay for, for, for me, they said go. They, oh, they, so they uh -huh. said you have to leave and yeah. who was going to get you out? The Americans? No, they said, uh, this is what they said. I have a, a friend who is a helicopter pilot. Your friend was a helicopter pilot? Uh -huh. And he said, this is the day we going. Your family had to be here. And then my command said, you had to be here this day. They call me. But I'm sick, okay? I can't go. How, you, what was wrong with you that you were too sick to get escaped? I didn't tell them that. Because I went to be my parents, visited them, and got sick there. I think about... You take a walk about four hours of ten away from there. So you walked to see your parents? Uh -huh. Why, to say goodbye because you knew you were leaving? No, because I told them that now the Americans come their home. So I probably come back to help you do a farming. I told my parents that. They said, okay, be happy you come back to do the farm together. I told them I probably you not know, do the air force and do anything because I would start my life there as a civilian. I told them my family. Uh, because I haven't had time, have a chance to talk to them. The time I was young, I went to school, and I had my time with them. After they grew up, they got a job, and I had time with them. So I told them, that, now you're going to give me a wife, I have a family, I know everything now. I thought I don't want to join the army, eat everything, sell it out, and I don't want to join the army. I have to come back to a farmer, and you can get old, can rest, and can do something. I talk about it, but I'm there. But I'm not lucky, I don't know why I was sick. I felt weak, and weak, weak, and then. So you got sick, so you walked back home, but then you couldn't get out? Yeah. So what happened when you couldn't go on the helicopter to escape? Well, they, they, they tell me the time, this time you had to be this place. So they, they told you another time? Yeah, they said, this time, this place, exactly this time, we will pick you up from there. That's what they said. So were you there? No, I told them, and, the time that I told them they don't wait for me. I can't, I can't do that. 
I don't tell them sick that they can't, I can't do that. Because I love my pain, I can't do that. That I lie to them. Yeah, I tell them I sick, they probably come and get me, but I don't tell them that. And so that why I went to war myself. So how did you get out of love? Okay, very difficult for me. When I, when I come back, you probably heard about the talking about the uh, Lao, the other company people shooting people over uh, the bridge. I was there at the time there. You the, were there hmm? when the communists were shooting people? Hmm? I was there, but I know the people in the front. And they said, okay, let's go. Because I think hundred or well, maybe thousand people to walk through. A lot of people come here. And me and my wife, we go over there. We had two kids. I was very ill. And we say, I don't have enough power to go very slow. And when they said, okay, people go moving now. Ready to move they try to read the movie. Then we heard a gun shooting, a lot of uh, noise. I did, we heard people screaming and running away. I told my wife, I said, we got help. Without that, maybe I'm dead. Why? i tell you why. I have my gun in my little uh, bag. My uh, 38 was there. I'm very good in the gun too, and because I know how to lose it. Maybe run away, I'm very sick, I can't run. And the two, four communist soldiers come in. They push and push in. I said to myself, if they kill me, I shoot four of them one time. And then kill them all, throw them away, nobody knows. But lucky they don't kill me, don't say anything. I say, hurry, hurry up. I told my wife, God no. If he doesn't know, they kill them, they kill the other people, so they kill them because I'm upset. I got a gun with it. I put load everything there. If they kill me, I sure I kill them because I'm the guy. Right, so when the communists came in. <coughs> when they attacked, when they shoot the people, they attack, okay? There's these crazy people. So there was like hundreds of people that huh? they were, where were they taking them? Okay, because they, no, they, a lot of people want to go to Thailand, okay? They did a uh, row over there and they had the uh, uh, port of it, the block over there. They said, okay, you can go, okay? My people pushing, then when they oh, shoot okay. it. So the communists said, yes, you can go, and all of the Laotians were pushing to try yeah, to get the over. Mong, the Hmong people had to go and they shoot it, and somebody killed them. They killed somebody there. And then the communists started killing the Hmong? Uh huh, and then people ran back. And the people, people then ran back. Uh huh, and they chased the people back. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up, they did to them. People chasing you back. And uh, I was the last one because I was sick. I can't go. So you I, were one of the last people. Huh? Pro- and so when the, everybody else was coming running back, what did you do? Then you knew <coughs> you couldn't get across? No, no, yeah. Everybody around me, running back. So we know we couldn't, we couldn't go through. We couldn't go. So we, where did you go? Go back home. That was <laughs> where, where you belong to. They say, go back home and don't do that. And then the four guys got a gun, everything in there. They kind of chased it. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. They, I saw they kill somebody up. I told myself, if they kill me, I put my gun. I know which one I got with bullet. So you were planning on if they, if they, if they, kill if me. they were going to kill you, you were going to use your gun and kill them first. No, I, I, I know they don't kill me, but they were going to kill me. If they kick me, they shoot them. They, oh, they kicked you. Huh? But they didn't. So you no, went didn't. back home. So then how did you get out of law? Okay. And then I, I went back and I went to the hospital. got the IV, everything for a couple of months. I feel better. And then I hired somebody, the, the driver, and said, okay, I will go to back to Vincent. He said, why you go back there? I tell him I school over there. Because I had uh, something that I go to school, he mentioned, from the time we met there. Okay, you know that. And then we stayed over there for two nights. I crossed to Thailand. I kept to Thailand. There's, How did uh, you get across to Thailand? Okay, we go by boat. <laughs> because I, I went to mention, I know the people there. I said, okay, I want to cross it. Okay, you had to pay me this much of my money. So you had to pay somebody to get you in a boat? <laughs> 
Sam and I cross each other go have Sam in the morning lady over there, over there, becoming the husband, they're not the same, just read her down the side. So they want to hurt, they told her to me, don't do that. So, so a poor, you don't have anything, suffer everything. Even, so, uh, how did you finally get to America? Okay, they came to interview, they call, they call people. They come in and the jury and the they call uh, Lu Yang, Lu Yang. The guy working close to the jury. They came in. I was there when they called me. So I know they took, they, they came in to call the name and then three days they came to me. They said, three days you come get them. Okay. So I know exactly what time they came in. And then the time they came to me, interview, I went over there and said, how come you guys don't want me to go? The guy is supposed to go. The, the guy, his name is Tucker. He worked with uh, the original three. The time I went there, he was there. Tucker? Uh-huh. Tucker, he went, was there. So why did he say they don't want you to go? No, I told them, why you guys don't want to go? They said, how? I said, you guys come and talk to everybody. You don't, you don't let me know. I was there. Are you sure? Yeah. When? I told them this tiny time with that. I think they probably don't take me because I usually, when I don't sick, I do different, right? When you see your skin and your face is black, then. <coughs> and then. For me, I talked to John Tucker right away and they tell me right away. They say, and I had anything to do. I told him, and I told him, you remember me, John? I said, no. I went and came to seven again. He got, got a gun, he gave his uh, pistol to me, a short gun, and I didn't want to get back to you. And all the guy to take you home, take a little chain and go get back. Oh, I didn't remember so you now. So you had given John Tucker a thirty-eight? No, we went, went to uh, Regiment 3. When you were in Savannah? Uh-huh, Savannah so kid. Yeah. So if we go to the front line, we have our own guy, but they get the small one. For me, I got the small one. They tell it, they go under the arm then, because I go with the loud soldier, and I had to protect myself too. I got two guns, one over here, one here. It can be two. So when we come back, you have to get back to the American, right? That they borrow for you. But the other guy, they take it home. They said they were to, they were to own it. Oh. And I told them that, he said, when you come back, we get to the, they said, I don't care, take you back. Then John and they had to come back, they had to go to the long chain, I talked to John and Pa said, did the guy take my gun, right? I take it back. I talked to John and said, I tell him, said, okay, you want to go? I said, yeah. I said, okay, bring your wife into me right away so I don't have the difficulty because I really want to come to me again. They, they were hard to get here. I believe uh, the second group from uh, Nongkai come to America. I so when you escaped, you could take your wife and your kids and you all left at the same time? Huh? And where did you go to? Well, I went to, I see, let's say the April 9th, 1976. Around 9 o'clock, I landed in San Francisco. And then my sponsor in Krista, Minnesota. Krista, C R O O K S T O N, Minnesota. That's on the border of the uh, Canada and United States. So you flew into San Francisco, <coughs> but you were going to live in Minnesota? Yeah, I flew to San Francisco to St. Paul. I changed plane to St. Paul to the called Grand Fort. Oh, no. Yeah. North Dakota, something like that. How and, long did you live in Minnesota? Uh, two years. We met in 76. Just two years? Yeah, I lived with the, my sponsor in 76 to 78. Who was your sponsor there? Uh, was that the I believe they call uh, Xavier Lutheran Church. Or Lutheran Savior Church in Christian. They sponsored my family and they there. And my brother, my older brother came to Chicago. And my uncle, the Chicago, and they want me to reunion Chicago. They want to elect the Minnesota because my family is 
So did you then go to live in Chicago? Yeah, Chicago for two years. And then they moved into California. Because I have a job there, they moved into California. So I had to go with them because I had the one who helped them, the fair people, everything. And they don't know anything. And they continue, they want me to go. I went to California in October 1982. I stayed there until today. Oh, so you still live in California. Uh -huh. When you came to America, what did you do for work? My first job is called Custodia. Sometimes I work for J JR Sam Plus Company. They make it French fry. I told them, I told a lot of people, say, my first job, I get paid $3.38. That's okay, I have to clean everything. <laughs> After six months, I talked to my supervisor, said, I told him that I want to do a machine operator. He said, how do you know how to do that? I said, yeah. But I didn't, I did not think that I know how to fly the plane. The so then you became a machine operator? Uh -huh. They call it triangle, right? Triangle, machine operator. They cut the French fry back. Okay. <laughs> And they were there. That time, I got about, which I paid a couple of more four dollars. That's it. Yeah, right now, people are talking about twenty, thirty dollars. Huh? How come I can't got three dollars? <laughs> I told them different. Yeah, you know, from the same rate, same rate, they get cheaper, right? And don't have any dollar get yet. A chicken about thirty, forty cent for a chicken. Yeah. What did you do? Then what did you do? After that, I went to, we went to Illinois. Now I'm on the welfare now because I don't have a job over there. What I don't was your job there? Yeah, I don't have a job in there. So I, I started going to school. Yeah, yeah I was school. They what, call. what did you go to school for? Because I, I wanted to get education. I go to ESL school. I tried to pay my GED even. 224, never get 225. <clears throat> and then we went to uh, California. And I attended school, adult school, so I decided to get through a uh, high school program. So it gave me GED May 84. So in May of 1984, you got your GED. Stayed for a while, until the same day, and back to school, I got my ass at college, I was sick in California. You went to college in, mm. in California? Mm -hmm. I got my A that. With what degree? A A S. Associate's degree? Yeah. Associate degree, yeah. And what did you do? And then I got a job in the mental health department. A K manager, and then I got part time at school. I got my BA in Newport University, come up California. BA, B, they call it BH, human behavior, right? They okay, were. so you got a BA in human behavior? Mm -hmm. And then I went to school at the National University in Fresno. And then I changed a little bit. I got my master in there. Master of Social Work, National. Your master's in social work? Mm hmm And then after that, I took my class at the call uh, Newport, University of Texas, on and off, on and off for my MWS, Doctor in Social Work there. So then you got your PhD uh, in social work. Uh -huh. Why did you? So have you been working as a social worker in California? Uh, when I got my master, I don't want to apply for that because I want to continue my education. I don't like my people, my worker, my boss not yet. Because I said worker at the K manager number four, then they won't give me a fine, but they were. They said, if you get high, because they need some uh, clinician for the larger people. But I know if I got clinician, I have to go get my license first, so I don't have time for my education. So I just told them, oh, hold on, okay? They know I got my degree from the national. They wanted me to apply for that, but I said, no, right now. 
the why? No, yeah, the Luther. I don't care if I want to go to the why? Because in my heart, I say, if I go to America, I want to get a higher education myself. I don't care I get paid or not and do something for my life. The way I do. Uh, I've been in the mental health for uh, 22 years. I try to retire. Uh, you worked in the mental health field for 22 years? Mm-hmm. I retired uh, June 2012, last year. Oh, so you just recently retired. Uh-huh. Did you, when you worked as a social worker in mental health, did you work with all peoples or did you specialize with Hmong and Laotians? Oh, for me, everybody. The Hmong, the Lao, the Mian, the Lahu, the Chinese, Vietnamese, American guy, they call Caucasian, right? His baby, whatever, who come in from help. That's why I'm for everyone. Did you stay in touch with any of your friends or your family in Laos? I went back to two times in Laos. You have been back? Hmm. Were you afraid to go back? No. So you didn't have to worry about your safety? No. Because I, this is the, my feeling that war is war, okay? War is over. I don't care because I don't pay any uh, policy. I try to visit the people. I went and went back to Laos. A lot of people asked me, are you afraid? We know you are a pilot. We, you know you do need to do that. I told them, uh, I, don't, I don't care because it's not my war. The government, they fight each other. I, will, I don't care. And hey, you are this side, you have to do that. You are this side, do that. We shoot each other, okay? Forget about that. You don't pay attention, no. A lot of people tell me you can't go, but I told them that I believe that I've. I far rather be a good person. I don't care. They will do anything. Because the government don't know who you are. But the people, they know you. And you do good, you don't have trouble. I went to town and I had trouble. Because I don't participate in the uh, resistance and things like that. Because I don't do anything else. Why? Because I want to get my education. Why? Because I want to get a job. Have my family have food. Have food and the thing and that's what I do. I got in that damn water, I don't, I don't want to do that. Oh, I forgot one thing. When I came to uh, Christian 1976, I believe in July, August, the American National come to me and they asked me, they want me to go back to the Air Force. They said, you know how to be monk, you know how to be loud. We need somebody to do that. Who came to you, the CIA? No, I think the Air Force. The Air Force, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. They cut me, they say, we know you record, you are pilot. We want you to go back, you tell me, yeah, that time I'm 30 years old, that's all. They say, when I say, if I want to do where, uh, the, I think the PA, P- Pennsylvania, right? We go over there, we need somebody to be more and loud like you, to join in. I told them, okay, come back in about two months. Why I don't join them? I'm like my family here. I'm not, I don't want to go back to Palo. I try want to stay with my family. So then they come in, the guy come in, I told him, I'm, I make up my mind, I'm sorry, I don't want to do that because uh, you see, if I went out, my wife and two kids here, and who will take care of her? She doesn't speak angry. I said, okay. About three years can be as you forget about it. And because I tell the truth, I scared. Because I saw a lot of things shutting down. You go there, they don't bring you down, right? I come to America, I want to work, I want to go to school for myself. That's <laughs> what I want to do. That's so, all. When did you become an American citizen? Um Probably be 84. 1984? Yeah. Where because were you living at the time? That time I stayed in Tulare, California. Oh, you were in California. Uh-huh. <laughs> A lot of people complain about me and become citizens. It's usually the Hmong people. They told me, they say, I'm the, the people that I'm the first one who apply for citizen. They say, you here, don't be. Why you apply? I told them, uh, I live in that country. I'm 
good citizen in this country. I don't care what you guys say. The time I when I applied for citizen, thirty dollar each person, right? For myself, I put my name in there, my white application, and my key in there. Yeah, pet my wife pet my key pet it. Other people they do them say I don't have the key, they had to do later. So I have been abused or everything. They when you see this, you become citizen people say something to you. You don't become citizen. Your group people say something to you. But my question is, when I came to the country, I feel very sad. Why? The language barrier, the culture barrier, you don't know anybody in this country. I feel isolated myself, but I mean, go to church, go work, and talk to everybody. But my wife, nobody talk to her. Here I come home, you talk to her. Here at home, nobody talk to her. And then the church decided to send a teacher to teach her. <laughs> Did they teach her English? Mm -hmm. So once you... What was that like to, to the adjust to the culture and, and the American people? It, it must have been very difficult, especially for your wife who couldn't speak the language. <laughs> At least you could. Um, how did you find the adjustment? Well, I think she probably be feeling sad and probably angry because the family, her family like over there, my family like over there. I think she probably think I bring her this country for something. But I told her uh, my life, I feel education is good. We had good opportunity for our training for yourself too. She said, I never be angry. I said, no, don't say that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel proud for her. She became a, a, a homemade teacher in 84. She got her in uh, high school eighty four and she had part of the uh, college degree. She had been uh, as a teacher for home bay for fifteen years. And then then she applied a job in mental health as key manager three. Uh, she retired too. I so I told her that that why we come here because education is a good thing for them. And that time I feel Sad because uh, being a refugee, nothing. I learned myself. This is what I, I talked to my uh, co worker, my boss, and so we had meeting at the county. I told him that being a refugee is very hard. Everybody had to be homeless, everybody had to be powerless. They said, How do you describe de the people who had the threat. I told them everybody who be refugee from Laos. And even a key is my mother's stomach had been stressed because the mother felt sad and they know how to the keep kid inside. I believe those people have, have been some kind of nightmare. Everybody homeless. But they don't tell you they are homeless. Most people they don't know anything about mental. Everything they call sick. They have nightmare and they sick. The frustration is the same. So I learned a lot different. Why they take a social work? Because I want to know why people care themselves. Why people just beating or do something that without they know. And go social work because I want to dig in and say, why, why? They want to decide that. I wanted to be psychology, but I said, no, no, I want to be social Psychology is more different. Do something they wanna they say, why don't I choose something? I say, well they wanna like it because I want to know why people because I have some friends who kill themselves. You had friends who killed themselves uh -huh. when they came to the United States or still yeah. in Laos? Uh -huh. The United States they killed themselves, two of them. I told them, why don't you let me know I can talk to them? Because I know how to talk to them. When I heard that they hang themselves, when I heard that they shoot themselves. So I told them I don't have Time to go talk to everybody. You to hear anything about that? And my last word to the uh, officer or the staff at Tulane County in two thousand seven. 
you know, the time, the hard time for the movie people, right? The time that they are at the German power. Yeah. I told, we had meeting, I told them, I, plan, I make an announcement, I say, you officer, you went to the street, you may be some remote people, they might say something hurting yourself. Because 30 years, we forget about the war, we just start our life. And this year, German power, we are ready and everybody said. This is what I, I tell them the truth in my heart. I told them this. Even I have a job right here, even I have a degree here, I definitely go back to law because if something like that, I definitely be harassed. Because President Bush would say, long term reason. I told them, well, for me, I was trained by CIA. In CIA terrorism, then I be terrorism. But we should be friends. Why don't we say something hurt out there? A lot of feeling. When you, somebody hurt or somebody said something to you, I think we all have heart and we have feeling sad. But for me, I think wherever I belong to, that land in my land, that country, my country. Well, Yang, uh, how would you say your military experience affected your life? Okay. I'm seeing a lot of people killing in the field. I talked to my supervisor, remember I told them that I see kids die, I see men and women die in the field, soldiers blow half in the field, almost everything, sick people, whatever. But I believe the a lot of people probably had stress, feeling, seeing people care, not easy to see people care. People got hand up, cut out, whatever, cut out, they're crying for your help, and then that. Sometimes you can do that, you can help them because you have to run for your life too. Yeah. Very typical for most people. And for me, I just lucky I be in the end of the day that time to go to school. That's, 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 but I know that not go good, not good for more people or other people, but I go for myself and be proud of this country. And I told them why, because we work together side by side. And we need to stay together. People, people sometimes can say something hurt, but they don't mean, they don't mean to the, sometimes you can make me stay. I don't, I don't mind what they do. So how far away can this country say? That's what I want to do. Yeah. All right. Yes. Well, Yang, I'd like to thank you sure. for your service. Me too. Thank you for the interview. Sure. All right. Thank you. Nice to see you, okay?